Okay, so this is uh, the next virtual lecture, Freeps 536. Um, the topic today will be jet formation, surface winds, and the feral cell. We're really going to be applying some of these pretty complicated concepts um, that we've talked about in the last couple lectures to thinking about the real atmosphere. And so the reading is Valus E, chapters 12.1 through 12.3. Okay, so the learning outcomes for today, we have quite a lot of ground to cover um, as we're going to explain how eddy effects differ between barotropic versus a baroclinic fluid. Um, it's going to be reviewing a little bit of some of the stuff we did before uh, and then describe what any momentum flux and momentum and heat fluxes look like in our atmosphere. Explain what EP fluxes look like in our atmosphere and what that means for the zonal flow. Uh, explain what the feral cell is and describe the residual overturning circulation and explain how it drives the mid-latitude jet. So we're going to be bringing things together here um, in a few different ways. All right, so we're going to start off by talking um, about a barotropic fluid. So as a reminder, this is something we've really kind of actually already talked about, but I'm going to review this and go through this a little more systematically. Um, so remember, barotropic just means, again, there's really no buoyancy variation, so we're ignore, able to ignore buoyancy effects. And another way to think about this is as a, a vertical mean. So you can think about, even though our atmosphere is baroclinic, you can think about the vertical mean as, a, as kind of the barotropic component of our atmosphere. Um, so the only eddy effects are from momentum transport. So let's go through what we mean by that. So let's put up our um, TEM, transformed Eulerian mean equation for the zonal momentum, um, du bar dt. Um, <clears throat> and so the, on the right is the PV flux equation, eddy PV flux equation, V prime Q prime bar that has the eddy momentum term and the eddy buoyancy or momentum flux and buoyancy flux terms. So again, for barotropic, there's no buoyancy variations and also there's no mean meridional flow. Um, <clears throat> and so there are no eddy buoyancy fluxes or heat fluxes, we can say, to worry about just eddy momentum fluxes. So we can cross out a couple of our terms up here. And what that means is that our eddy PV fluxes are really, when we say that, we just mean eddy momentum fluxes. So if the eddies converge, uh, or I should say, yeah, if the eddies converge momentum to a at a particular latitude, that means there's more momentum going in, and so you should increase the mean momentum. So what do the eddy momentum fluxes actually look like in our atmosphere? So I'm going to just focus on the top left plot here is the distribution of U prime V prime bar, the eddy zonal momentum flux. Um, <clears throat> and so the colors denote, um, so solid is positive values, meaning towards the, or uh, means acceleration, uh, or I shouldn't say acceleration, sorry, means uh, uh, yeah, a flux of, of positive zonal flow. And so why I just tripped my words there a little bit is that so in order to accelerate the flow, you need more mo zonal momentum being fluxed in than is going out. So it's a convergence of the zonal momentum flux. And so that's this minus d dy u prime v prime bar. So um, for that to be positive, you need u prime v prime bar to be decreasing as you move northward, because then that implies that there's more going in than coming out. Um, or going in from the south and coming in, or then leaving from the north, through the north. So where that happens then is, um, is <clears throat> you can see is in the red boxes here, is generally poleward of about 30 degrees north, where the eddies are converging zonal momentum in the middle latitudes. So this is accelerating them. This um, acts to accelerate the mean zonal wind near the jet. And for the barotropic case, uh, oops, excuse me, and then we already said that. So, um, so yeah, so that's highlighted right here. Uh, and so what's interesting is, as this is, you can align this with the plot of, so you can focus on just the black contours are the zonal mean zonal wind. We've looked at this before. Um, you can see that this aligns pretty well with where the actual mean zonal jet is, um, throughout the troposphere. So in the middle latitudes. So, <clears throat> so there is clearly a connection here, um, that, on average, you have westerly flow in the middle latitudes uh, throughout the depth of the troposphere, including all the way down to the surface. And um, and so this is driven by the convergence of zonal momentum in the middle latitudes.
Okay, so now let's uh, move on to the baroclinic fluid where we include the buoyancy effect. So let's get more complicated. Um, so the real atmosphere is baroclinic, so we also have to include the eddy heat fluxes. So I'm going to start using the term heat fluxes because we're going to look at those in a moment. Um, but so what we're talking about here is this second term, uh, which is the vertical derivative of the buoyancy fluxes modified by f naught over n squared. Um, and so this is uh, now I'm showing in the bottom left, the top left is still the eddy zonal momentum flux. The bottom left is now the eddy um, polar heat flux. And so uh, this is um, from Vallis also. And so what you're seeing here is V prime T prime bar multiplied by the cosine of latitude. So you don't have to worry about that, but V prime T prime bar. Um, and so what is this showing us here? Um, it's showing us that the eddies, so you'll see positive values mean poleward heat transport um, or northward heat transport and negative values mean southward heat transport. So what this says is in both hemispheres, you can focus mostly on the northern hemisphere, the eddies transport heat poleward throughout the extra tropics. Um, and they do so most strongly actually at low, at, the, at low levels. And that's really part of baroclinic instability. This goes way back. Remember, as we talked about in class and even in your tank experiments, these eddies, um, these extratropical eddies, that part of what they do is they move warm air poleward and cold air equatorward. And that's transporting heat poleward. And so what's remarkable is so a thing that I think actually I haven't emphasized enough yet is this term is all about this heat transport. As we talked about, it actually acts to reduce the meridional temperature gradient. And so by thermal wind balance, it actually should weaken the jet. And so we can actually see this. This term says it's the vertical derivative of this V prime. V prime B prime is very similar to V prime T prime. Um, so what you can see is that since it is peaked at low levels, it decreases with altitude, which means this term um, and our PV, this buoyancy flux term, the convergence term is less than zero. So you can see that mathematically that would imply a weakening of um, a uh, yeah a weakening of the jet. So one important exception is near the surface. So at the surface itself, it has to be zero. So when you go up from the surface to something that's positive, there's an increase there. Um, and that may seem very weird and it's actually quite complicated um, uh, if you get into the nitty gritty. But the key thing is there is a positive um, contribution at low levels near the surface where it has to, it fundamentally has to increase from zero. So, so, but a key thing to just emphasize again is don't forget eddies mix warm and cold air. So they're reducing that, um, equator to pole temperature gradient. And so in the process there by thermal wind balance, this thermodynamic effect is acting generally to weaken the jet except near the surface. Okay, so let's recap. So what we're, what do the eddies do? The mean zonal wind um, in the context of the EP fluxes or the, excuse me, the PV fluxes is that dynamically it's strengthening the mid-latitude jet. There's a momentum flux convergence. Thermodynamically through the heat fluxes, this actually acts to weaken the mid-latitude jet except near the surface. So which wins out? Um, so this is where we can look at the combined effect, which is through the PV fluxes, um, um, and, uh, which we can represent as we learned last time through the EP flux divergence. So we're gonna look at those plots now in the real atmosphere. Um, so again, we have the equations in the top right as we had before for du dt and v prime q prime bar. So now we're looking at both terms combined together. And so this is just v prime q prime bar. As we learned last time, we can write this as a divergence of an EP flux. So the EP flux is the U prime V prime bar and this F naught over N squared V prime B prime bar in the, um, so in the meridional and vertical directions. <clears throat> so what's plotted here now is to take a second to think about this is, so the arrows um, on the plots below, so the left is for June, July, August, so Northern hemisphere summer, and then the right is for Ju December, January, February, Northern hemisphere winter. The arrows are the EP flux vectors themselves. Um, and so again, so we're not interested in those, we're interested in the divergence or convergence of those. So del dot F is the EP flux divergence, which is shown in the colors. Um, and then the contours for context are the mean zonal wind in each, um, uh, just yeah, to give you, to orient yourself. So what's important here is again, so the reds indicate divergence, so positive del dot F. 
And divergence of the EP fluxes means a positive uh, PV flux. And so that means that du bar dt is positive. So an acceleration. You notice that's confined to some pretty small areas, particularly near the surface um, beneath the mid-latitude jets. So meanwhile, you see convergence. So blues indicate convergence, so negative divergence, which is an indication of a deceleration of the flow by these PV fluxes. Um, and that happens most everywhere else, not everywhere, but in particularly a loft in the middle latitudes, you see strong convergence, which says that the eddy effects as represented by these direct PV fluxes are act to weaken the, uh, <clears throat> um, the zonal mean zonal flow. <clears throat> Let's just summarize this from the EP fluxes is that in the barotropic case, eddies generate a mean zonal flow through momentum convergence. In the baroniclinic case, eddies generate a mean near surface flow, zonal flow, that should say, um, through both momentum and uh, momentum fluxes um, and uh, buoyancy fluxes, actually, um, just, just near the surface. But otherwise, it actually weakens the mean flow aloft in net. So the, which is to say that the buoyancy flux term more than offsets the momentum flux term. So this is weird. So if the eddies weaken the jet in the free troposphere, then the question is what sustains it there? Um, so we're gonna come back to that and we're gonna, and it's gonna turn out the eddies are still gonna be important here. So, but we first need to talk about one last concept that we haven't yet, one last key circulation we haven't hit yet, which is the feral cell. So let's talk about that. All right, so the feral cell, long last, one of these things you probably have heard about and haven't learned a ton about um, because it really requires a lot of complicated theory to get to. So the feral cell is a thermally indirect, eddy-driven, Eulerian mean, I underline that, meridional overturning circulation in the middle latitudes. There's a lot there, let's look at it. Um, <clears throat> So what's shown here is the Eulerian mean um, stream function um, for at all latitudes here and with height, um, <clears throat> where you can see there's the Hadley cells I've marked in H, so we've already talked about that. And now I'm highlighting the feral cells and with F, and I've put the arrows on there to denote to give you a sense of, of the nature of the overturning um, circulation, which is in this case, we call it thermally indirect because here we have sinking motion closer to the equator where air is warmer. So warmer air is sinking and cooler air is rising. So it has the opposite sense to the Hadley cell circulations that we learned about before. So the, yeah, the black contours here are the stream function. Um, and I'll let you pause and you can read about other things um, on here as well. Okay, so let's understand the feral cells. This is a diagram showing, um, uh, and we're gonna walk through this step by step. Um, and so you can see again, this latitude increases going from left to right. So um, you see rising motion, um, air going upwards at higher latitudes where it's colder. So this is again, thermally indirect circulation. So we're gonna step through this. So at aloft, we have air moving equatorward. So we had said already that, um, so again, in the Eulerian mean sense, so this is not the transformed Eulerian mean, uh, all we care about is the eddy momentum fluxes and that acts to, that converges in middle latitudes aloft. So it's accelerating the flow. Um, and so to, to reach some sort of steady state, you need that, that source of momentum to be balanced by a sink or by a, a sort of a negative source of momentum, if you want to think about that, which is a Coriolis, which is balanced by the Coriolis westward acceleration. Um, and so for that to happen, that requires an equatorward flow. So equatorward flow will be turned to the right, um, which will be westward. And so that generates a, a, a westward acceleration. So what about these rising and sinking um, regions? So eddies, we said diverge heat from low latitudes and converge it at high latitudes. Um, and so um, if heat is being lost from low latitudes, that has to be thermodynamically, that has to be balanced by a heat gain. Um, and how that is acquired is done is by subsidence warming at low latitudes. So um, theta potential temperature this is shown in terms of potential temperature, potential temperature increases with height. And so um, you can advect higher values of theta downward via um, subsidence. So that's subsidence warming at low latitudes. And then at high latitudes, the opposite is true. So you need 
Um, heat is being converged there, and so that is balanced thermodynamically by adiabatic cooling um, through rising air. And then meanwhile, in the um, frictional boundary layer, so friction is removing momentum at the surface, and so this has to be balanced by some sort of source of zonal momentum, and that is via a Coriolis eastward acceleration, so this requires a poleward flow. So all of these link together. So what's crazy is that the, the physics are, is actually different for basically all of them, all the branches, but they all work together synergistically to give you this Eulerian mean feral cell overturning circulation. <clears throat> okay, so this balanced Eulerian mean overturning, um, we had called V-BAL and W-BAL, this is the feral cell, is what we removed to derive the transformed Eulerian mean circulation or um, system. So here is just the regular system here where I highlighted the, the dominant balance between these two, and I didn't really tell you where that comes from or what that means, so we've gone through that here. So what was left was a residual circulation, V bar star and W bar star, and so that system is shown here. So the question is, what does this residual circulation look like, and can we understand it? Um, so the left is our Eulerian mean case again, where we have our feral cells as before. And then the right is the residual circulation, this V star, W star. Um, and you'll notice it looks quite different. Um, and what's remarkable is the residual circulation is now a thermally direct, direct overturning circulation that actually extends from the equator to the pole, which is very, very different. And this is actually quite remarkable. <clears throat> so like we said, we've, what we've done here is we've remo effectively removed the feral cell from our understanding or from our, the equations and what's left is a residual, which is there is still this residual equator to pole thermally direct overturning circulation. So what drives this residual overturning? Um, so we can think about this again in each um, context. So at steady state uh, in the thermodynamic equation or buoyancy equation, um, the W star is equal to scales with S bar, um, which is the heating. So what this says physically is vertical motion is just driven by variations in heating. So warmer air rises, so there's more S bar is higher at lower latitudes, so the heating is stronger. So warmer air rises there and cooler air sinks at higher latitudes where S bar is smaller. So this is now at a planetary scale. You, it's in some sense like the Hadley cell, but you have to be really careful about saying that because um, it does not follow the same dynamical constraints of the real Hadley cell. This is just a residual, but conceptually it's just a simple overturning circulation that now magically is equator to pole. Um, <clears throat> and then we can also think in terms of the zonal momentum budget is that what drives the poleward component of this is um, V bar star is equal to minus V prime Q prime bar, so the eddy PV fluxes, again, divided by F naught. So what that says is the poleward flow actually uh, is it's driven by the eddies and it actually occurs within the eddy circulation. So this isn't, again, this is not a true mean overturning circulation. It's a residual overturning circulation that happens as kind of the net effect of lots of intermittent eddies occurring, um, that there's a net residual flow that's poleward and it's directly related to the PV fluxes. So, the strange thing then is, um, <clears throat> is we had asked this question of we had thought that the eddies weakened the jet in the free troposphere using our EP flux calculations. We said that should decelerate the, the jet. So what sustains it? So there has to be a source of momentum. And so what's pretty cool is we can go back to our transformed Eulerian mean circulation or um, uh, equations for our, our momentum equation specifically. And so we've ignored this frictional term a lot in the free troposphere of friction is small. And the V prime Q prime bar, we had said this is actually negative. This is a deceleration. The EP flux is convergent here. So that should decelerate the flow, but we have a, some sort of a steady state. And so to have a steady state, then we need some sort of a source. And the only thing left is the F naught V bar star. So what is that? That's the Coriolis torque, the Coriolis force, if you will, acting on the residual poleward flow that, as we said now, is, is poleward all the way from the equator to the pole. Um, 
And that's the thing that sustains the mean zonal jet. And so the key thing here is that since this residual polar flow is actually driven by the eddies themselves, um, in this sense, the mid-latitude jet really is actually still eddy driven. Uh, you wouldn't have this residual overturning circulation if you didn't have the eddy PV fluxes. So after all this, um, <laughs> if you're confused, you should be, because I actually was also as I went through this. Um, the key thing is that the V prime Q prime bar is not the only thing that depends on the eddies. So the PV fluxes, this is a way of understanding and kind of decomposing what the eddies do. Um, but it's it, in the end, the eddies and, and really shifting everything, all of the eddy activity into the momentum equation. So that's really what's key. We've moved it out of the, the buoyancy tendency equation into the momentum equation, but there's still both of these terms on the right hand side depend on the eddies. So in this sense, then it is still the entire jet is middle latitude jet is really eddy driven, but in very different ways, whether you're thinking in the, in the boundary layer versus in the free troposphere. So just to summarize, um, this eddy-driven jet, mid-latitude jet. So if you were thinking barotropically, so and you can think again in terms of the actual zonal mean, or the, excuse me, vertical mean um, uh, in our atmosphere, the mean zonal flow, a mean zonal flow is generated by just eddy stirring. So um, you get momentum that that transports or converges mom, eddy or converges momentum into the stirring region. In the baroclinic case, which is really what our real Earth atmosphere is, um, the mean near surface zonal flow is generated by eddy stirring. You have momentum transport there. It's also augmented by um, eddy buoyancy fluxes. So the baroclinic, there's baroclinic generation there as well, just near the surface. Meanwhile, in the free troposphere, the zonal flow, the eddies themselves act actually to drive both the momentum source through the Coriolis torque on the residual circulation and the momentum sink, which is the eddy PV fluxes um, as diagnosed by the EP flux convergence. So this is very see, may seem very bizarre and complicated, and it, and it really is. <laughs> um, the eddy, the effects of eddies are quite complicated um, and, and act in different ways. But ultimately then this says that you need the eddies to have the jet um, not only at the surface, but in the free troposphere as well. So, um, and this is just a summary cartoon um, that we put up before and I've thrown on the residual overturning circulation here as well. Um, you have the mean zonal flow in black, the Eulerian mean overturning in blue, both the Hadley and the Farrell cells, um, the residual overturning, which is equator to pole in pink, and then you have the eddy momentum transport um, uh, in the orange. Uh, and so I'm just going to let you think about this. And there's a lot of different parts here, obviously. Um, but being able to think about how these are all related to each other is actually a, a kind of a, a key thing that if you can accomplish, uh, you've got a lot. Um, you understand a lot about our general circulation and how the dynamics and thermodynamics constrain um, the behavior of the general circulation of our atmosphere and say why we have westerly and easterly flow where we do in our atmosphere. Okay, go to Blackboard to answer a few questions about this topic.